We're here in front of historic and beautiful Beverly Hills City Hall. City Hall was built in 1931, designed by architects Harry Kerner and William Gage, and it opened to the public in 1932. Beverly Hills' original City Hall was this one-story building across from our old railway station. Here is the brand new eight-story City Hall about to open in 1932, with our fire station still under construction. The towering structure cost a million Depression-era dollars. The gilded cupola that tops the tile dome could be seen for miles. Beneath it are interiors filled with terrazzo floors and intricate ceilings, like this one in the council chambers. Residents see this room quite often since we televise all the council sessions and commission meetings to encourage open government. The Sun Lumber Company across the street supplied most of the building materials, and local businesses like Francis Orr supplied the desks and filing cabinets. The city later purchased the lumber yard for the future home of our library and police department. Our Civic Center was begun in 1982 as a design contest and dedicated in 1990. The new buildings echoed the classic revival-style architecture with a series of elliptical courtyards, balconies, and walkways that connect the city's buildings across Rexford Drive like beads on a string, as the architect Charles Moore described it. When Beverly Hills first became a city, we had no mayor. We were run by a president and board of trustees. So in 1926, as a joke, they appointed Will Rogers our first honorary mayor. Will Jr. and Mrs. Fred Niblo remember the day. <laughs> I'll never forget the idea, which really started as a joke, to meet him at the train, give him the key to the city, and make him its honorary mayor. That called for a parade, which was really a parade. Yeah, I was there too. We'd been living in Beverly Hills for some four or five years, and Dad had been east all winter, so now he was coming home coming home to be made honorary mayor of his adopted city. Everything was set, of course, for a real California welcome, except for the one thing that they couldn't control, the weather. As I remember, they built a platform in front of the Beverly Hills Hotel, and the crowds were parked clear across Sunset and down into the park. Everybody says I'm going to be a comedy mayor. Well, I never met a mayor yet who wasn't comical. I'm for the common people. Since Beverly Hills has no common people, I won't be handing out many favors. Will Rogers was our first honorary mayor, and maybe our only honorary mayor, and he understood that having a post office in Beverly Hills would put the city on the map. He wrote a syndicated newspaper column with the byline Beverly Hills. He was soon getting so much fan mail that he lobbied Washington to get our own post office. It served us for over five decades until modernization left it behind. Now it has a second life as the Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts. Will Rogers was a national figure on radio and America's favorite film star. He also had a polo field at his house just east of the Beverly Hills Hotel. After matches, the polo players would walk across to the hotel to celebrate. When Will died tragically in a plane crash in 1935, the hotel dedicated its bar to his memory, and the name Polo Lounge was born. Over the years, the Polo Lounge has been the meeting place and negotiating table for the biggest names in the entertainment business. Dreams have been fulfilled and shattered. Careers made and broken. The Polo Lounge is where Hollywood does its real business, on the rocks.